This is a quick guide on how to start using your payroll software. Once you've registered, this is where you go to start. Once you open up your company, the first thing we would suggest is going to settings and entering in your company information. The company name, address, phone number, all of this information with the employer registration number. Anything that you put in here is what will show up on your reports or within the actual pay slips. Once you've entered this information, just click save. Employee information. This is where you would start entering in all of your employee data. So their name and address, phone number, date of birth, start date, whether they're paid by PayPath, which is just a file that you can create through your payroll and upload it to your bank. Uh, bank gyro, cash, check are the other options as well. The pay period is whether you're doing weekly, fortnightly or monthly payroll. The basic rate equates to the amount that you're paying them for. So in this case, it's a weekly payroll, so it's a weekly amount of 1,546.42. You can put in a monthly amount, a daily amount, an hourly amount, it's completely flexible. The hours factor might relate to the number of hours that you're paying them for, I might just say 50 hours. Auto update. This is specifically important if the person that you're putting the information for gets paid the same amount every week or every month. If we click auto update, enter in units of one and say salary, or we can pick normal hours, holiday, there's lots of other options within here. In this case, I'll just pick salary and then 20 euro for expenses. What this means is that every time I go into my timesheets, if I click auto update, it'll bring in the details from this employee every week without me having to do it manually. Over here to the right, there's a CSO analysis section. This is specific to the CSO. So you can specify for your employee, whether it's full-time, part-time, apprentice, other exclude. We can't add to this list. This is specifically for the CSO. The EHEX uh, category is also to do with the CSO, and it's just three different uh, categories, manager, professional, clerical, sales service, product, production, transport, and manual. Again, we can't add to this list. It's specific for the CSO. If you want to add departments in here, we do have some accounts, maintenance, management and sales. You can add departments in the settings tab. and I can show you that in another video. Over here towards the PRSI information, you can tick if any of these apply. If the person is a director, if they're on a CE scheme, if you know they're on a J class, something like that, you would tick this. If you're unsure, you would check with the Department of Social Protection. The PPS number is where you enter it in here. You can do this manually just from whatever the information of the employee gives you. The tax status could be cumulative, emergency or week one, month one. You would get this information specifically from the P2C that you can download from revenue. The tax credits, cut off, monthly, weekly, and then the universal social chart section. You could enter this in manually, or again, you could import this from the P2C from Ross. The next tab then is PAYE PRSI history. This is where you enter in the P45 from the previous employment. So if someone starts with you mid-year, you would enter in the details from the P45, gross pay, tax paid, gross for USC, in some cases this can be different, and then USC paid. That's all you have to enter in here, and then you click Save History. Deductions, should there be any deductions in place? Anything like BUPA, any healthcare, VHI, um, anything at all, any type of deduction, pension, PRSA, these all go in here. If it is a PRSA, you would enter in the details for the PRSA setup in here, and then in here it will automatically populate into this section. If it was pension, you enter in the details here. You can just type in whatever you enter in here is what will show up on the pay slip. The amount that the employee contributes, and if there's an employer contribution, you would enter that in here as well. If it's excluded from tax, you will tick this. If not, you leave it unticked, and then you tick it as active. The next step in here then is the PRSA setup. So you might put in the provider ID. This could be somebody like Irish Life or the insurance company details. The reference, you can enter in any type of reference. Whatever you enter in here again will show up within the deductions report and on the pay slip. The start date, when the PRSA started, the leaving date, if the person has left, the certificate type, whether it's a net pay or or just without or just the PRSA two. So whatever you define here will define whether or not it's going to be deducted by tax or not. The employee information you enter in here and employer contribution you enter in here. It's also important to make sure you enter in all the annual values. Holidays. You can enter in the holidays as they go. This is purely administration. 
So if you want to enter in and um, the person gets five days or two days or 20 days for the year, you can enter this in by going into add and putting in the information here. If you want to leave this blank and then enter in details as the employee takes time off, it'll just give you a running total down here at the bottom. There's also an option with regard to the 8% rule calculation down here, and we'll uh, talk about that within another video. Other leave. This details may be sick leave, maternity and other, and this can be important if you just want to keep track of all your information with regard to the payroll in one place. Notes, any additional notes for the employee. Bank email. So if you want to pay by PayPath, it just means that if you put in these details and create your PayPath file through the payroll, you can upload that to the bank, but it'll pay the employee based on the information that you've entered in here, their SOAR code, the account number, but in more particular now, it's BIC and IBAN. If you want to email their payslip, you will take email payslip, you will put in their address, an address for payslips, in some cases this may be different, and then a password. You have to have a password, this is a mandatory field, and has to be a minimum of four characters in length. The tax card gets populated as you process your payroll, so you will see this when you start entering in, doing your timesheets and processing your pay. If there are any disciplinary issues for the employee, you may want to enter this information in here personal tab. Again, if there's any other information, any notes, any agreements for salary, anything like that, you might want to put this information in here. When the employee leaves your employment, it's in the PRSI info that you go into and you would select this information. There will be another video with regard to P45 in an employee. The tax cert. This is the very last tab in here. This is very important with regard to if you have imported your P2C information from Ross. Once you do that, all of this information gets populated. You can't do this manually. This just gets populated once you've imported the P2C information. Once you've got this information all done, you can now do your timesheet.